If you're anything like me and you photograph the eclipse of 2017 or the eclipse of 2024 in America, or anywhere else around the world for that matter at any other specific date, you've got these solar filters in your kit. What the heck do you do with a 16 stop solar ND filter. Well, you could try to sell these things, but everybody and their brother's mother's uncle is doing the same thing right now. Or you could get creative with them. And that's exactly what I've done over the course of time with my photography with filters that are, let's say more than six stops. Okay. Even a six stop ND filter, you don't need a whole lot in a landscape photography atmosphere. Sometimes six stop can help get the water to look really nice and wonderful. Sometimes it's too much. Depends on how much light is there for the day. What I want to do here is I'm going to hop into Photoshop and give you a look at some of my images that I've shot with anywhere from a 10 stop ND filter to a 20 stop ND filter. Yes. For the 2017 totality, I had a 20 stop ND filter. Unfortunately it broke. So this is a great example of what an image can look like if you use a 10 stop filter or beyond, even in broad daylight. This was out at the Tallgrass National Preserve. It's a relatively uh, interesting place, but it's a prairie and photographing a prairie, there's not mountains or waterfalls or anything wonderful like that. You just have a lot of open land. Well, how do you make that open land look unique? Well, if you photograph those clouds with a long shutter speed, you can get some really unique looks like you see here. Now, what this entails is calculating how long of an exposure is going to be after you get your exposure set. So how this looks is I'll usually go into aperture priority mode and I set my camera to the exact exposure that I'm going to need. I take a regular shot to see how it's going to look. And then I use that as a basis to calculate my exposure. Now I like to use a program called photo pills for this. It's on my phone and I usually have this with me at all times when I'm out on location in this app, you'll look for where it says exposure. So let's say that this image was F 11 at one 1,000th of a second at ISO 100. What we're saying here is that we want this. We want to see how long of a shutter speed we're going to need. If we put a 10 stop ND filter on, or in this case, since we have solar filters, a 16.6 stop ND filter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this little filter icon here. And what you'll notice is just so you understand how stops work. Any stop that you're going to add on the front of your camera is going to half your shutter speed. So if we set this to one stop and press OK, you'll notice that we are going from one one thousandth of a second to one five hundredth of a second. OK, now if we change this to two stops. It's going to half that. So now we're at one two hundred fiftieth of a second. So let's scroll this all the way down on this side here to our 16 stop ND filter. And to get it exact, let's go to the two thirds setting here and press OK. So what that's telling us is that this shot would take one minute and 44 seconds for my camera to expose for it. And that can be all fine and well, but what if I want more mov movement of those clouds? I'm going to want more time. So then I say to myself, well, okay, let me change the base uh, aperture here to something that's going to be a little bit smaller because the smaller the aperture is, the longer time it's going to take to photograph it. So let's make that F 13 and press okay. Now we're at two minutes and 11 seconds. And then if I change the ISO here to maybe 50, cause I can go down that far in the Sony, we're now at a four minute and 22 second exposure, which is going to make those clouds look crazy sweeping. Now for an image like this, you may need to also take that base shot that you took and compile them together or composite them together in Photoshop. So that the foreground doesn't have anything moving. Cause if there's any wind, anything that's moving during that four minutes and 22 seconds is going to be moving as well. Now you might say, have you ever done anything like this in your portfolio, Blake? And the answer is absolutely positively. Yes. There was one time that I went to Cape disappointment. And if you've ever been there, this is the place with that awesome lighthouse where you get these beautiful waves that smack across these rocks and go flying against this rock. Well, I didn't have that. This is what I had. <laughs> I didn't go at the right time of day. I didn't go during a storm. I just wanted to see Cape disappointment. So I went. I only had a very small window of when I could go. So I decided to just drive there and take the chance. I'd never seen it. Why not? Even if the, this, the uh, environment isn't perfect for me, I'm still going to do that in my photography, even if it's noon. Okay. Just cause I like, I enjoy this. It's all part of the process. Now I didn't really like this photo because there's not a whole lot going on. So I thought to myself, well, Hmm, what happens if I use my 10 stop ND filter on this? And this was the result that I received. It was very interesting and actually made for a wonderful 
almost nighttime looking image, which I then converted into a day to night image, which is a course that I have on F64 Elite that talks all about how this process went down. And there is another instance where I use this in my portfolio though, and that is with this image right here. I was actually conducting a workshop in Rialto Beach in Olympic National Park. And while I was setting up and helping people with compositions, I figured, well, let me go ahead and shoot this and see what it looks like. I didn't really like it. And I knew I was gonna be walking around and teaching and, and talking to people anyway. So I left my camera set up and I put my 20 stop ND filter on it. Yes, 20 stop ND filter. Now, if you put a filter on that's gonna go beyond 30 seconds and you don't have something on your camera that will go beyond 30 seconds for an exposure, you're gonna have to use a shutter release of some sort, whether that's controlled by your phone or it's an actual analog stick that has a button on it that you push down and hold down and it takes that exposure so that I could go beyond 30 seconds. Now this ended up being an eight minute exposure because it was a 20 stop ND filter. This wasn't that shot that was that long. It was this shot that was. And you'll see I did a ton of work here on top of this shot to make what I would consider a portfolio image, a very highly artistic portfolio image of a sunset scene that didn't quite work out to be a beautiful sunset for us. But what happened here is we take this kind of chaotic textured water with this chaotic textured rock and it just doesn't make for a good photograph. But when we use a long exposure, it ends up making things look ethereal mystical and has a unique quality to it that people wouldn't normally be used to seeing. It also has this beautiful minimalistic look to it where these rocks appear to be coming out of this almost mirror like glass quality of water. Now couple that with obviously all the work that I did here to make this image. It was quite the experience for the viewer after I'm done with it, but it didn't start out that way. Now in this shot, you don't exactly see the detail of those rocks. So I had to add that from the original exposure. Then I did some work in Adobe Camera Raw looking at some of the uh, different white balances. And I was like, ooh, I kind of like that. And then I went and I rolled with it, I added some color grading here, and then continued to expand on that color a little bit to make this really wonderful and unique sunset experience that would never have existed otherwise. While I know in this, I was mainly talking about a 10 stop and a 20 stop ND filter, I have yet to experiment with a 16 stop ND filter, but it's gonna be no different. If you really think about it, all it's doing is stopping down the amount of light that's coming in there. And this is right in between 10 and 20 stops. These are still valuable to have in your kit. Will you use them every single day? Probably not, but you could be on a location that is wonderful and beautiful. and has a lot of unique character to it. Maybe it's midday light. Notice that most of these were taken at midday. If it's midday light, you can use these to make that look more unique, more ethereal, more mystical, and give the viewer something of interest to look at beyond midday light shots. Now, would I consider using this in a sunset environment? Probably not, because it would make those exposures incredibly long. And in that case, I might go with a three stop ND filter if I wanted something similar, or maybe even a six stop ND filter. These are primarily gonna be used for midday light when people are typically not photographing things at all, kind of like a solar eclipse. <laughs> If you photograph the solar eclipse, I certainly hope you had as much of a great time doing it as I did. And if you didn't, I hope you're enjoying the images that you're seeing around the web. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. I like to take difficult things in Photoshop and make them seemingly simple so you can use them in your workflow today. I know I really didn't do a whole lot of tutorial based stuff here. This is just to give you some ideas so that you can get out and put those 16 stop ND filters to use so they don't collect dust in your camera bag.